Okay guys, they, they really, 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 really might have broken this one. This is a oh, four Mercury Sable. Kind of lowish mileage, I guess. 91,000. It's a younger fellow's car and looks like he bought it once. You guys hear that rattle? He bought it once and then drove it till the engine started making noise. And I don't think it has any oil in it. So we're gonna swing back around to the shop, check the fluids on it. And we're gonna do a mechanic in a can BG oil system cleaning service to see if this thing could be saved. Uh-oh, that just showed up too. Not looking good for this old Mercury. And off. Okay, it's got it. Not much oil on the dipstick. Yeah, it's, it's pretty low. Okay. And my coolant is also pretty low. Okay. And here it is. The infamous mechanics in a can. Oil system treatment and oil system cleaner. So we throw this stuff in there. Let it run for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever. Change the oil. Run it again. Change the oil again run it again and then change oil again it's supposed to clean all the varnish and deposits and whatever else they say you're not supposed to have inside your engine out of the engine snake oil so we pop in the top i substituted some water for coolant for now just to just to run this oil system stuff in here and away it goes no it's not water You guys spend a lot of time watching me pour stuff, don't you? And I'm gonna give it a, a quart of 530. Oh, dear. oh no, I spilled it. And you're still watching me pour stuff. Get it. Okay, we're gonna run this thing and let it clean itself. Or let the can clean it. Yep, that was it. So, what we did is ran some cleaner through the engine you, you put it in the oil system and you let it run for 15 20 minutes and then you change the oil a couple times and see what happens uh, this particular example nothing happened and it just kind of makes more more engine noise i'll try to rev it some and see if i can recreate it yeah see it's quiet here there's some couple clickety clacks. There it is. So, in an effort to save this thing, we have ordered some connecting rod bearings and I'm going to pull the oil pan off and see if a set of bearings will save this engine. A little scary, I have to drive underneath of the Dodge. Just a little bit. Let that trailer hit the squeezing under giant truck. Step one here is going to be to 
remove the engine oil pan. And of course, step two will be to drain the engine oil. I'm just kidding, guys. I know better than that. I might be an idiot, but I'm not a savant. Okay, I'm not very far into this and it's not looking good. Lots of rusty bolts. I've already broken one off, so. We haven't even gotten the exhaust off of it yet and I am now having to perform surgery. Even getting a fastener on these bolts is difficult because they are swollen due to rust. Third time is a charm. I hope. Nope. Oh, it's wobbly time. I will make this socket go over this fastener. Closer. Okay, I think that's as close as it is gonna get. A little more than halfway. It's gonna have to do. Need proper leverage. right off. Okay, going back in again. I changed the socket to a 15. It's slightly too large, but maybe it'll have enough bite to pull this, this nut off. Or I'm just gonna round it off and make my situation a little worse. Oh, heard the crack. There she goes. Good. Yeah, that's pretty crusty. Okay, the next two are these two flange bolts right here. Nope, slipped right off. Okay. All right, so I'm three fasteners in on this job and it looks like each one is a different size so far.
Mr. Krusty. Okay, that worked, so I'll repeat exactly what I did on the next one. By the way, all of these are wet because I soaked them last night in uh, penetrating oil. That was the slip of the socket, I think. No, but this one's gonna break. I feel like it's gonna break. Just work it back in. Back in again. All right, it's coming out now. Let's see if the electric's got the, the oomph to do this. Nope. This one's just got to come out by hand. Dang. Yeah, look at that. I don't think there's much left for the threads. Okay, the next set, I have to get from the top side. And it's these guys right up here. stuck. Oh, come on, turn. Yeah. Now we're talking. All right, no more screwing around. I got the 3 8 reduction adapter on the impact gun. bolted here need to get the o2s out of this at least i think there's just the one now there's one yeah looks like just this one and there might be one here nope nope just the one okay back and forth. 
or drop it. Oh. I don't think I can get this out without damaging the thread, so I'm just gonna disconnect it at the connector since the opportunity has just presented itself. Come here, connector. Uh, I knew there was another one. There it is. Looks good in there. All right, now that this exhaust is out of the way, we get these, uh, these fasteners off with incredible speed. Wobbly bits. And wobbly bits we have. We're gonna do it. Nope. Mm, it's not gonna work. Oh, that one's tight. Very tight. Tighter than it should be. Because it has corrosion. that socket again. Not gonna lose it. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to do this one by, by hand.
shredded plastic. That should be the last one. Do a perimeter check to make sure it looks good. Looking good. Oh, come on back guys. Looking good, looking good. Everything's looking good. Okay. I'm gonna install two bolts. That way, once I break this loose, it doesn't fall down and hit my oil drain pan and then knock over the funnel in the pan and then drop all of my fastenings on the floor. That would be bad. Well, silly me. It appears that I missed a fastener that's up in here. So, I will take that off. Let's see if this thing comes out. this. I lied. Yeah, that's bearing material. Found at the bottom of the pan. Uh-oh. This is not looking good. Uh-oh, look at there. Boy, see that in there? More bearing material. I don't know if this little engine is gonna chooch any longer, but I'm gonna keep pulling it down and we're gonna get those uh, those uh, rod bearings out and see if this thing's gonna be okay. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah, I wanna get this oil pickup tube out. Wow, that's a little tight. That one, and then uh, a few more 10 millimeter nuts. Huh. Where's my 10? Lost it. Okay, well in the absence of my 10, I'm just going to use my, my wobbly 10. Idiot. It's an eight. Try again. The Ocho. little shiny chunks in there. Yeah, this pickup tube is full of chunks of bearing material. Let's bring it over to the bench, dig it out. I 
clean workspace. Still a few more stragglers in here. I'm not gonna be able to get it all out unless I blow it out with shop air. But I'll get out as much as I can. There's some. Roger Dodger. No, no, I said Roger Dodger. Transmission received. My relays are on the way. Different project. I'm a multitasker. All right, that's about all I'm really gonna get out of this thing. There's some more in there, but I think we get the picture. What I don't get is there's silicone sitting in here. Black stuff, that's that's a little odd. Yeah, that's old RTV sealant. A few pieces of it. I bet this thing had a had developed an oil pressure issue, which is why we lost a bearing. Yep, that's bearing material. There's more bearing material. Let's see what's in the pan. Alright, more silicone. piece of bearing. Oh, there's a big piece of bearing. Yep. This looks like plastic. It's brittle. Another piece. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in the parts washer. Oh, look at that oil in there. See all the metal floating around in it? Shiny oil. We don't want shiny oil. Chunky shiny oil. Okay. This is cool. This thing's like a dishwasher for car parts. I'm not done yet. I still want to remove the connecting rod caps and inspect the bearings. 
Total destruction has been located. Go back to the engine and get this windage tray down. This one's easiest, so I'm doing this one first. All right, that bearing's not too terrible looking. turn the crank to get other other rod caps removed so my GoPro just went dark and I'm not sure if it captured um, all the footage of me removing these caps I've got two of the, the main caps removed look like it's from cylinder one four and five three and four and I pulled the bottom half of the bearings out they're not looking too good, but that doesn't explain the chunks that I have in the oil pan just yet. I mean, they're, they're horrendous. So I'm gonna keep pulling these caps out until I find the, the chunky bearing because we need to determine if the crank is any good on this engine or not. So I'm gonna let the GoPro cool off. And as soon as it's uh, back online, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna gently tap these pistons up and get clearance away from the end, from the crankshaft. Here's a piece of 
bearing right here. Yeah, it's looking pretty chowdered up too. Okay. All right, you guys are looking straight up at number five and number six. I'm gonna rotate the crank around so I can get a better angle on those. And we'll pull those caps next. move you guys around a little bit. You were getting lubricated. By the way, these connecting rod caps are not interchangeable and they have to go back in the same place and same orientation from which they came. Looking pretty bad. Oh, I think we got it. That's it. Look at there. That's it. It's spun. You see the line in it? It's spun right there. That's our guy. Just found the spun bearing. Watch this. See, this is either the top or the bottom half, and likewise up here. This line should be right here and held in place with little tangs. This bearing has spun and lost oil pressure on this crank journal. I think this engine's uh, this engine might be junk. All right, I want to get these bearings out, so I'm going to drive this piston back up the same way. Two, three, eight, six stations, and some tacky tack action. that I removed from cylinder number six. And we can see, see the scoring, scoring. You see the discoloration between the edges, the center, and then the next edge. That is from the crankshaft journal actually wearing this bearing down. If you recall, it was spun. turned about 90 degrees from its normal orientation. Both of the tangs have been ground off flat, so there's nothing to keep this bearing in position. And it's just been kind of free floating. And it's in the connecting rod, starving the rod, the crank of oil. That might be where all this 
stuff came from. And again, that crank journal is really in no better condition. It's actually not that bad considering, but I do feel, feel how rough it is compared to this one here. I'm still going to try to save this. I'm gonna emery cloth this crank journal and I'm still gonna put bearings in it, I think. Because we can't really make it any worse at this point. Got some emery cloth sandpaper. And I'm going to try to polish this thing smooth again. And perhaps I can save it. save this engine. Okay, so I just emery cloth and polished this crank journal. And it's looking better than it was. Not the greatest, but it's better. A lot of progress has been made and what I've found so far has surprised me. I expected to find quite a bit of damage on this crankshaft. It looks like most of the scoring on the bearing journals was embedded aluminum from the bearing itself. We've already ordered some connecting rod bearings, so stay tuned for part two as I reassemble and try to save this engine. Do you think this little motor is gonna live another day? Let me know in the comments below. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. As always, I'm not gonna thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But I'll get out as much and as I can. And don't forget, have a great day.